everyone, I'm Jess, and today I have a fun tutorial to share with you. We are going to be making the Backyard Beverage Caddy Pattern. Welcome to the Sally Tomato YouTube channel. Here we share lots of sewing tutorials and inspiration for all skill levels of sewing. This tutorial is long overdue. The Backyard Caddy was one of the first patterns that I ever wrote and I simply just haven't carved out time until now to film the tutorial. This caddy is designed to hold your favorite bottled or canned beverages. And over the years, I have seen Sally Tomato fans do so many things with this pattern. I've seen it used as a caddy for sauces, for picnics. You can take it camping and use it for s'mores supplies. And I've even seen it used to hold hair styling accessories at salons. This caddy is perfect for gifting drinks or sauces to family, friends, and neighbors. You can take this caddy with you to the beach, to cookouts, to holiday gatherings such as the 4th of July, Father's Day, Christmas, birthdays, all kinds of events. The finished size of this project measures 8 inches wide at the base, 9 inches high, and 6.5 and inches deep. This pattern features a sturdy handle and base. Between the layers of the main fabric and the lining is a sturdy material to help support either cans or bottled beverages. The caddy has six compartments and the pattern comes with optional free SVG design files to embellish your caddy. If you have a digital cutting machine, you can download the SVG files and cut out the designs from heat transfer material to iron to your caddy. As always, before we get started, be sure to purchase the pattern. You can either download it from our website or check out your local Valley Tomato retailer to see if they stock it. Visit our website for a complete list of retailers. All of the supplies you need are listed on the back of the pattern. This pattern is ideal to feature novelty cotton prints or canvas. I definitely recommend using a non-woven fabric that's sturdy such as cork fabric or faux leather for the handles and the base because that will add a little bit more structure to your project. So have fun when planning and picking your fabrics for this project. Then after you have all of your supplies gathered, cut out your pieces according to the pattern and let's begin. First of all, you'll want to follow the cutting instructions included in the pattern to cut out all of your pieces. There are pre-made labels included with this pattern so you can label your pieces as you cut them. I've simply taken a sewing clip but you can pin your labels to each of your pieces for easy reference. There are a few paper pattern pieces included with this pattern so you'll want to trace those either onto tracing paper or make a copy on your scanner or scan a copy and print at home. Then simply follow the cutting instructions in the pattern and cut out the pieces required on each of the paper pattern pieces and then we can begin. The first section of instructions is to prepare your bias binding. You'll want to cut a square of fabric. I've already went ahead and prepared my bias binding. You can prepare it following the instructions or using your preferred method. Otherwise, we do have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to prepare bias binding on our YouTube channel, which we've linked below in the description. Next, we'll prepare the fabric. You'll want to fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of the coordinating exterior, lining, center divider, and beverage divider pieces. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for fusing. Next, you have the option to add some fun phrases to the front of your caddy if you would like. Download the SVG file designs on our website to embellish your caddy. If you have a digital cutting machine, you will need some heat transfer vinyl to cut out the design of your choice. Center the design on the front of your caddy and follow the instructions to fuse the vinyl to your fabric. Next, we'll assemble the handle. Position handle stabilizer B inside the placement lines on handle stabilizer A. Top stitch B to A with an eighth inch seam allowance. Next, with wrong sides together, fold the handle piece in half and insert the handle stabilizer between the layers of the handle so it is pushed up against the fold. Top stitch along all outer edges of the handle, 
with an eighth inch seam allowance to conceal the stabilizer. If you're using faux leather or cork fabric, you may want to use a Teflon foot. This will help guide your fabric through the machine easily. I have the very narrow foot attached to my machine, which seems to work well on the faux leather. After top stitching, if desired, you can install one rivet a half inch in from both top corners of the handle. We have a video tutorial on our YouTube channel on how to install rivets. We've linked the rivet tutorial in the description below. Next, we'll assemble the beverage dividers. Fold each beverage divider in half matching the five inch sides. You'll want to start at the folded edge and sew up to the marking according to the pattern. I've already went ahead and marked my pieces so I know where to start or stop sewing. Next, when I go to sew the opposite side, I will start at the marking and sew up to the folded edge. After sewing, trim the corners of the seam allowance only. Just be careful not to cut through your stitches. Turn each divider right side out, carefully poking out the corners. I like to use our Sally Tomato Essential Turning and Creasing Tool to help smooth out the corners. This tool has a curved edge with a point, which is helpful for smoothing along the seam edges and the folded edge, and then you can use the corner to push out the corner without popping through your fabric and creating a hole. Use your fingers to roll the seam edges flat and give it a good press. Then press each unsewn edge to the right side according to the pattern. Then press each unsewn edge forward to the wrong side according to the pattern. Next, insert one stabilizer piece into each divider. Fold the unsewn ends of the divider so they are perpendicular to the seams. It's very helpful to apply double-sided basting tape along the length of each of the ends. Otherwise, in the upcoming steps, you can use pins or washi tape. Next, we'll work on assembling the center divider. On the center divider piece, use a removable chalk or pen to mark in from each width side and in from each length side according to the pattern. Then you'll want to iron each length side with wrong sides together according to the pattern. Position each beverage divider so the seam is centered over a length line and the edge of the divider is even with the width line. If you use some basting tape, you'll want to press down to each unsewn end to adhere it in place. If you use pins, it's a little tricky to pin it in place, so I'm going to use some washi tape. You can stitch right over the washi tape and then tear it away after sewing. Once each of the dividers are positioned, then you can sew each side of the dividers with an eighth inch and three eighths inch seam allowance. You can fold the dividers away as needed to stitch each side of all the dividers in place. Next, you remove the marks, then fold the dividers out of the way and align the bottom of the handle with one short edge of the center divider. Use some sewing clips to hold together, then fold the divider in half matching the short edges. Reclip the sewing clips to hold the layers together, then sew along the short edge according to the pattern. After sewing, trim the seam to an eighth inch wide. 
Position one center stabilizer B a quarter inch down from the top of center stabilizer A. Top stitch B to A with an eighth inch seam allowance. Then repeat for remaining piece D on the opposite side of piece A. Turn the divider right side out and press. Insert the center stabilizer between the layers. Make sure that the pressed side edges of the center divider stay folded and there should be about an eighth inch of fabric that extends past the stabilizer. Top stitch all edges with a quarter inch seam allowance to conceal the stabilizer and close the sides. Trim any loose threads and set the assembled center divider aside for now. Next, we'll prepare the exterior and lining. Center one coordinating stabilizer piece on the exterior front and back, exterior side panels, and the contrast base. Use sewing clips or basting spray to hold the pieces together. Then top stitch each stabilizer piece in place with 3 8 inch seam allowance. This next step is optional. You can choose to install one bag foot two inches in from each corner of the contrast base if desired. If you'd like to install this hardware on the bottom, then you can visit our YouTube tutorial for instructions on how to install this hardware. We've linked the tutorial below in the description of this video. Next, with right sides together, sew the nine inch side of the contrast base to the bottom nine inch edge of the exterior front. I like to take a pen and mark the start and stop marks so it's easy for me to see when I'm sewing the seam allowance. With 3 8 inch seam allowance, making sure to start and stop 3 8 inch from each end. Repeat to attach the opposite side of the base to the exterior back. Next, with right sides together, sew the seven inch side of the contrast base to the bottom seven inch edge of the exterior side panel with three eighths inch seam allowance. Make sure to start and stop according to the pattern. Repeat for the opposite side and side panel. You can use a press cloth to press each piece away from the base or you can grab the Sally Tomato Essential Turning and Creasing Tool and use the curved end to crease the fabric and press it in place. With right sides together, sew the side edges of the exterior front and back to the adjacent side edges of the side panels with 3 8 inch seam allowance, making sure to start at the top edge and stop 3 8 inch from each end. After sewing, trim the seam allowances to 1 8 inch wide. Turn the exterior right side out. Then you'll attach the lining front, back, and side panels to the lining base in the same manner as the exterior, but this time use 5 8 inch seam allowance, starting and stopping 5 8 inch from each end.
Then you'll attach the side panels to the front and back in the same manner, but start at the top edge with 3 8 inch seam allowance and gradually increase your seam allowance to 5 8 inch wide, making sure to stop 5 8 of an inch from the end. Leave the lining wrong side out and trim the seams to 1 8 inch wide. Next, we'll attach the bias binding. With wrong sides together, insert the lining into the exterior, aligning the raw edges and side seams. Baste around the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance to hold the layers together. Next, Unfold the binding strip and fold one short end a half inch to the wrong side. With the right side of the binding against the right side of the lining, align the length edge of the binding along the top edge of the caddy. I like to align it as I sew, but you could certainly use sewing clips or pins to hold the layers together. Sew the binding in place with a seam allowance that is slightly narrower than the first crease in the binding. You'll want to ease gently around the curves and take your time because you do not want to stretch the binding as you attach it. When you're back at the beginning, overlap the binding by one inch and trim the excess. Refold the binding, wrapping it around the top raw edge towards the exterior. Press the binding in place and use pins or clips to hold it in place, just covering the previous stitching. If desired, you can certainly add some double-sided basting tape to help hold the binding in place. Then top stitch the binding to the caddy with an eighth inch seam allowance, or you can hand stitch. And the last section of the pattern is to add the divider. Mark the center of each side panel along the top edge. You can do this by matching the side seams and marking with chalk or a movable pen. Set the divider down inside the caddy, aligning each side of the divider with the center mark on each side panel. Fold the top of each side panel in half at the center mark so the edge of the divider is in between the fold. Sew the layers together with a quarter inch seam allowance, starting at the top edge and stopping approximately two inches down. If you prefer not to sew through the layers, you can install two rivets on each side to hold the divider in place. After the divider is attached, the last step is to Fold each top corner of the caddy with lining sides together and sew the layers together with a quarter inch seam allowance, starting at the top edge and stopping about three quarters of an inch down. This will help add some shape and structure to your caddy. Thank you so much for watching this video and perhaps even sewing along with me. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make the Backyard Beverage Caddy and if you have any other questions or suggestions, let us know in the comments below. We would love to see your fabric choices and how you're using your caddy. Use the hashtag SallyTomato and hashtag BackyardCaddy on social media so we can see it. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll check out the rest of our pattern line for more creative projects. See you next time.